Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, my name is Mika and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to actually talk about my very first paycheck when I first became a data analyst. So we're going to talk about how I landed the job and everything. We're going to break down my salary a little bit. We're going to compare it to my last income and then the lessons that I've learned. I know you guys' this time is valuable. Timestamps are down below if you just want to skip to the part that, you want, that you're very interested in. So let's just go ahead and jump right into um, it. This is something that I got a lot quite a bit um, some people were asking me about my salary and so my thing is is that everybody knows exactly how I started off as a data analyst because you guys saw this video right here and so I talked about me becoming a data analyst with no prior experience and um, no computer science degree and basically how it changed my life let's just go ahead and talk about how I actually landed my very first data analytics job so I remember getting a call from a recruiter telling me about a position with a Fortune 500 company. So I went through the interview process. So the very first um, part that I actually did, the first round, I actually met with the team manager. And he asked me a few questions. It was mainly about, like, tell me about your experience working with SQL. How efficient are you with reporting? Tell me about your SSIS skills. Tell me about your SQL skills. You know, that kind of thing. And so that lasted for about 30 minutes. And he, after he told me about the company and what the position and what they were looking for. Um, so then after that, I made it to the second round interview, and this was with actually four people, which was all the seniors, and then also the team manager as well. This is your technical panel, so they were asking you more in-depth questions, and it's not just tell me about your SQL skills, it's more like tell me about you working with store procedure. What was the most complex store procedure you've ever worked you've ever worked with? How did you troubleshoot your um, slowly running report? How did you um, troubleshoot your... Um, uh, store procedures and they want to know about CTEs and me working with temp tables and all of that. It was very, very technical and it wasn't a whole lot of um, scenario based questions. It was mainly technical, in depth, you know, developer type questions. And so this interview lasted for about an hour. I got to the third round and when I made it to the third round interview this is when I actually interviewed with all of the actual um, managers for each department and also with the IT director so here I met with the IT director the the manager over the business analysts the managers over the qu um, quality assurance developers and then also the team manager was back in this interview again so that was also four people as well and so this one was not technical because most of the time these business analysts QA managers managers and the IT director most of the time they're all on the business side so they're not very technical at all so this was really more scenario based questions this interview lasted for about 30 minutes by the time I finished round three I finally made it to the fourth round I actually met with the executives and the CEO and the president of the company there was only three of them and that one also lasted only 30 minutes once that interview was done after that fourth and final round the same day I ended up getting an offer so when I got the offer, um, the actual um, HR person from the company, now I had been working with a recruiter leading up to this, but when it came down to presenting the offer, the actual HR person representative from the actual company itself contacted me to tell me that they were offering me a position. And the amount that we are offering you along with benefits is going to be $75,000 a year. So with the $75,000 a year, that was the most money I had ever made in my life. <laughs> because again, I came from insurance. I came from banking, customer service, then banking, and then insurance. So I was an insurance adjuster making $42,000 a year. So when they offered me the position, they were offering me $75,000. Now, a lot of people would say, that's not a whole lot of money because I thought you can make $100,000. Exactly. You can make $100,000 in this field. If you want to make $100,000, please be aware that if you are asking for $100,000, they're going to want, they're going to expect $100,000 worth of work out of you. So just be aware of that. But for me, I was okay with taking the 75 because I looked at it as on the job training with pay. That's exactly how I looked at it. I told myself that I was going to work here, get all the experience that I need and everything. And then eventually, maybe after a year or two years, maybe even six months, a year, two years, then I feel like once I got my feet wet, really understand how it goes, really have experience, then maybe I can go and find another job that is willing to pay me what it is that I'm looking for. So going from $42,000 to $75,000 as a um, data analyst, that was a 78.6 or shall I say 79% pay increase. 
after working there for about a maybe about a week or a week and a half um there was another position that arrived which was the ssas position which is sql server analysis services so i did take on this role and because they looked at my resume and said hey you have ssas experience i have this much ssas experience y'all like this like this much and but they offered it to me anyway because there was no one else that was in the in the whole company that could do SSAS and they gave it to me in addition to my role and so they had to draft up a whole nother offer letter and so then my pay went from seventy five thousand dollars to now ninety six thousand dollars now um so just after one month of working there I went from making forty two thousand dollars as an actual insurance adjuster to now making ninety six thousand dollars as a data analyst. With me making $42,000 a year, the gross was $1,615.38. After you took out federal, um, medical, and social security and insurance for my kids, then I brought home $1,260. So that was bi-weekly. Um, when you add all of that up per month, I was bringing home only like $2,500 $2, a month. Now, at the time, my rent was probably like seven something, $800 a month. At the time, I had no car note, so I made it work. All my bills was able to get paid with less than $2,500 a month. G girl? <laughs> now, once I ended up getting the $96,000 a year, uh, my gross pay went to $3,692.31. So after federal, um, um, social security, insurance, and all of that, then I ended up bringing home like $2,920. So for the month, I was looking at about um, $5,800 a month compared to $2,500 um, a month. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so when you compare it to my previous job, the crazy thing for me when I compare my IT, my data analytics job to coming from the insurance world, that I was bringing home $2,500 a month. I was now bringing home more than that every two weeks now. And so after I, then I started realizing that I was able to pay all of my bills was just one check because every bill that I had, I was I was only making, I was only bringing home twenty five hundred dollars a month. So all of my bills were getting paid with the twenty five hundred. Now I'm bringing home almost three thousand dollars a month. I'm bringing home twenty nine hundred, and every two weeks, so one check, one check was pretty much covering all of my bills. So by the time I got paid again in two weeks with the other twenty nine hundred dollars, I'm sitting there looking like girl. What we finna do with this at 2900 Because I hadn't had that before. And so that was, that's when I realized that I had made the best decision. Um, I realized that I had really struck gold here. And just comparing where I had came from and where I'm at right at that, at that moment in time. I was, I was, I, I was still shocked. I remember when I first got, um, it was almost time to get paid. So my very first check until they were like, hey, um, we get paid on this particular day, on this particular Friday, we're going to get paid and blah, blah, blah. So the previous company that I had worked for, we could look at our paycheck on Wednesday to see what our check was going to be on Friday. So I could see it from Wednesday. So that way I can already start, you know, seeing what bills need to come out and blah, blah, blah. By the time Friday got here, I knew this will go here, this will go here, and this will go that. And then, honey, let me say something. I used to say I live paycheck to paycheck. Honey, I live paycheck to Monday because by the time Monday got here, I was already at a goose egg. Um, but when I was, when I got into the IT field, I couldn't see my check on Wednesday. I couldn't even see it Thursday. I literally had to wait until Friday until it got there. And when it got there on a Friday, my expectations was exceeded abundantly. Like I couldn't even imagine making that much money at that time. I was just like $2,900, $2,900, girl, I didn't even touch it for about a day because I was like, they gonna want this back because they made a mistake, child like I, it's just that it was more than what I was expecting and I was able to pay all my bills plus still have some money over and knowing that I'm gonna get another one just like this in two weeks oh girl 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 lessons learned this is gonna be my thing so when it comes to you getting your first 
when it comes to you getting your first job as a data analyst and you want to negotiate your pay, remember, like I said before, that you want to make sure that you are um, checking out the company to find out what their budget is and then location. Location is everything because what they may pay you in California, they probably can't pay you in Utah or what they pay you in New York, they probably can't pay you in Texas because the cost of living is just completely different. And then on top of that, the size of the company makes a difference on um, their budget and everything. So before you start negotiating, just make sure that you do your homework because what you don't want to do is come in too high. If you come in too high, one or two things is going to happen. One, if they really like you, then the, if you come in too high, they're willing to negotiate with you and say, hey, we can't meet that, but we can do this. They're willing to negotiate you because they really want you. Now, the second thing that could happen is, is that you can come in too high and then there's somebody else who is just equally qualified as you that came in lower and they'll just go with them and just be like, oh, sorry, we can't meet your, your salary compensation. And so we decided to go another direction and they end up going with another person who basically has the same qualifications as you, but just came in maybe $20,000 cheaper or $5,000 cheaper or whatever. So you just have to make sure that you don't come in too high, but you don't want to come in too low. Um, first of all, $55,000 a year, no ma'am no ma'am $55,000 a year I don't expect you to take that no matter where you are located okay um that is just way too low even for a junior position that is too low I say do not accept anything less than $70,000 um as the minimum when it comes to becoming a data analyst and that's even for a junior position alrighty um another thing is is that um so you don't want to come in too low because then you're you're allowing to lowball you because you're going to be doing a lot of work and your experience is a lot and your skills is a lot so you definitely definitely want to make sure that you don't come in too low now ninety six thousand dollars was a lot of money for me at that time back in 2016 um but like i said now it's been nine years later based on my experience and my skills that i do currently have right now no i would not accept anything for not i would not accept a job for ninety six thousand but now that you know that the possibilities that you can have you can make a hundred thousand you can make a hundred and fifty you can make all of that but starting out when i had no experience all i had was my skills to lean on i was willing to take that 75 because i wanted to start from the bottom and work my way up and so just make sure that you learn how to negotiate and then also stay humble I know that you're seeing you probably the reason why you won't become a data analyst is because you've seen all how we're how we're living these lavish life and it's flexible or maybe someone told you about it and you see how they're living but my thing is is that just be aware start where you're comfortable start where you feel like you can manage because what you don't want to do is get this job because once you get the job you still have to keep it start where you're comfortable and then grow from there the one thing i can definitely say is is that um and some companies like this company that i was with that i started off at um this company did offer bonuses as well so we got um we got bonuses at the end of the year so we got annual bonuses and so i was i wasn't used to that either but we did we got annual bonuses and then you go up for annual reviews as well and so um we have annual reviews and so with that after you finish doing your annual review you can get a raise every single year between one percent up to five percent maybe even six percent depending on the company and so you can definitely get annual raises and so that is something you can definitely try to increase your pay from there if you don't want a job hop or anything like that but that again that is what my first salary was like it did exceed my expectations I really do appreciate you guys watching um, I do plan to put out another video that is pretty much talking about my journey my financial journey basically how I started um, from um, 40 from 40 to, well from 96,000 to what I'm making currently today along with side hustles and also my um, investments and things like that and how I got started in my investments and so I would love to put a video out like that um, so just stay tuned for that but I truly appreciate you guys um, rocking with me checking it out seeing how I managed my first job and my first paycheck um, and things like that so again I thank you guys so much for watching if you have any questions or comments you can definitely put that down in the comments down below and I'll try to respond to as many as I can so you guys have a good rest of your evening thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next video bye